Hi, everybody. Thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, I just wanted to make sure everybody's in the right place. Or this year, I guess we should say, make sure that everybody clicked on the right place, clicked on the right link. Uh, this is AP Portuguese. I'm Mr. Scanlon. Now, only one of those things is true. I am Mr. Scanlon, and you can see now because I could take that off because nobody's here. Uh, but this is AP Microeconomics, not AP Portuguese. I would not be very good teaching that. Okay, so here's what we're going to try to accomplish over the next 10, 12 minutes. Uh, of course, please feel free to click off um, anytime you think you've had enough. It won't make me feel bad because I won't know. If you were here and stood up and left, I might get a little sad, but I'll never know. So when you've had enough, you've had enough. If you feel like you need more, if you don't understand something at the end of the 12 minutes, just email me and I will be happy to try to clarify. All right. So this is what you students see every day. That's what I'm trying to do here as I'm explaining stuff to you uh, to give you a feel for um, the routine and, and what your students experience here on a daily basis. Right. Uh, right now it's on a every other day basis, but it'll soon be on a daily basis. Thank goodness. So uh, I'm going to give you a quick intro on myself, talk to you about the daily routine. Uh, I'll get into the grading system. We'll go over extra help and test corrections, and I'll give you a brief uh, overview of the course and a description of the exam that they'll be taking in May. Right? Um, I do my aim in the form of a question. I tell the students that they should be able to answer that question or questions by the end of the period when they're walking out. And if they can't, it's due to one of two reasons. One, we just didn't get there. Okay? Um, kids were really confused about the first thing we were doing, and it took a lot longer. Um, we got into a discussion about the presidential debate or, um, I don't know, the new controversial Nike advertisement or um, who's not watching football anymore because of the kneeling. Who knows? Uh, they're seniors, and if they have a lot to say that they want to um, discuss, I think that's great. And uh, this is a class where I've been teaching it long enough that I think I, I know the pacing well enough that we can um, speed up and make up time here or there when we need to, if a valuable uh, conversation like that uh, does come up, right? Um, however, the other reason is they tuned out, um, they were at their locker for 10 minutes and then the bathroom for another 10 minutes and then the nurse for five minutes, right? Um, if that's the case, then we gotta do something about it. So I always tell them that you could try to encourage them. If they're not getting, if they're not able to answer those two aims and they're not super positive that it's because we got into a discussion or because going over the homework took a lot longer than I thought. Just have them ask me. Scanlon, I can't answer that, that second aim question. Did we not get there or am I missing something? I might say, yeah, you know what? We didn't get to it today. Don't worry. We'll do it tomorrow. Or I might say, yeah, man, you were at your locker for 15 minutes and we went over some really important stuff and you should probably set up an extra help session. All right. So that's that. Um, the daily setup, you can see there is here. They have a, a digital one, obviously, also because of the, the situation with the, the hybrid. So today, uh, we had to do now. We returned and reviewed a quiz. We did some practice problems. We did not get to start our notes. So we still have a little further to go with that aim question. Uh, but for the most part, they should be able to answer where they can observe the 12 fundamental economic principles in everyday life. And you guys, I can forward uh, to the parents and the students do a chapter one practice problem. It's one. I will send out a reminder about that after I finish up this video um, after my, what is this, my 20th attempt. Uh, so hopefully this one, hopefully this one's good. Um, so a little bit about myself. I've been teaching 17 years, 15 years in Island Trees, um, with a couple years, unfortunately, here or there where I was accessed and wound up in Seaford or... Um, down the road into Woodmere out of Yeshiva, but luckily over my, my 17 years, I've never not had some place to teach. Uh, this is my preferred place to teach, not just Island Tees, Trees, but this classroom, 151, has kind of become my home. Um, you know, so this is where I want to be. Uh, this is where I am, and I'm very, very happy. I'll be even happier when there's 29 kids in here every day instead of uh, 16 and 15 and whatever we've been doing, all right? Um, so that's my story. Again, I don't want to get too far into that because a lot of you people I know, either from AP Research or AP Seminar or uh, other uh, older siblings or coaching uh, your athletes in either football or lacrosse. So um, most of you guys know me. You really want more about what this class is about and how it's going to work. And if you want to know more about me, again, uh, contact me anytime via the email. I'll, I'll give you the life story. 
Okay, um, so the daily routine. Again, they'll see the game plan, uh, so they'll know, man, we got a whole bunch of stuff up there. We must be moving through it pretty quickly. Or there's only two things up there, so it's going to uh, be only two things, but it's going to take a little longer. Right? Um, I like people to know what, what to expect and what's coming. Right? Um, for, for the COVID situation, um, in, in hopes of social distancing and stuff, you can see I'm kind of old school in, you know, my teaching approach. Um, I'd probably still be using a, a overhead projector if, if they let me or if they still had them and they were functioning. Uh, so I'm still kind of a handout guy. Everything this year so far that I've made hard copies of, I've had digital versions of on Classroom, even though it's taken quite a while. Um, as far as the um, social distancing and whatnot goes, right, I'll just show you real quick. Here, kind of like my pickup drop off area, right? So it'll they'll see every day when they come in, there's two things to pick up. Drop off today was only if they owed something, so I wasn't sure. So I have three of these stations around. Uh, so when they come in, hopefully, uh, they take a look and see, all right, I got two things to pick up, I got one thing I got to drop off at the end of class. Um, and it's they're spaced out in such a way where uh, hopefully we don't get too much congregating and uh, we keep that that social distance up. Right. Um, so that's really it. That's the daily routine. Uh, I have been doing participation checks every day, but that was mostly to make sure the people at home are not just logging in and going to sleep because it's kind of hard to be paying attention here and making sure all 17, 18 kids at home are, are locked in. Right. Um, especially if they're, they have their just their emoji on. Right. So I was doing a participation check every day. It was a little bit of busy work just to make sure. Uh, people were paying attention. So as soon as everybody's here and I can see who's paying attention and who isn't, uh, we can kind of move away from that. Um, and that's really it as far as the, the daily routine. Um, the grading system, I'm sure everybody is concerned about, so let's check that out. Okay, so I'm, I'm assuming some of you guys have used this in other classes or your students have had this uh, be the routine in, in other classes. I use total points, so it's not like 25% uh, for homework and 35% for tests, 10% for participation. I used to do it that way. Uh, they finally convinced me to do total points, and it's so much easier, especially for a person who's not as mathy as me. So that's basically just you try to accumulate as many points as you can throughout the marking period. Everything has a point value. And then at the end of the marking period, we take how many points you accumulated, divide it by how many points were on the table that you could have gotten, and divide, and that gives you your per percentage, okay? Uh, so quick example, right? If you only had these three grades for the marking period, there was a test that was worth 120, you got a 96, which is a good, decent grade, that's an 80. Um, if there was a quiz that was out of 80, and you got a 62, that's not so great, that's a little... Uh, below 80, that's like 77, something like that. Um, and you got a homework and you got a perfect score because homework is usually based on effort. Even if it's totally wrong, you tried every problem, you gave it your best shot, All right? So you got your full credit there. So that comes out to 183 out of uh, 225. So that would work out to be 0.81. And then you multiply that by 100, that kid's average would be an 81, right? Again, this system makes it so much easier for me to give bonus points out if we're doing like a competitive review game um, or for somebody to do test corrections or just get extra credit in general, okay? Um, the only thing I want to warn you about with that is it takes a little bit of getting used to if you've never done it before, right? So like if you got um, this test here, it's out of 120. If, if you look at the paper and just see that your kid got an 88, you might think, oh, 88, that's pretty good. At 120, it's not so good, right? Um, and same thing here, right? Like if you, um, maybe you got a little better, um, if you got a, uh, like a 70, right, out of 80, you might not be so happy that your kid got a 70, but then when you realize 70 out of 80, eh, not so bad, okay? Um, in general, tests will be a, somewhere between 115 to like 130. 35, I think, is the highest I've ever gone. Quizzes will range from, like, 50 to 80 in that region. Um, and homeworks, depending on the uh, difficulty level or the, the time that should be put into it, 
could be anywhere from five points to 25 points. Right? That's the grading system. Um, what will we do next? Uh, oh, test corrections. Okay, test corrections. Okay, I'm going to take us to the class overview. Okay, hopefully you can see that. Your students all have this. Um, so my goal here is, is not to, to make students suffer. I'm not one of those teachers who like looks at their grade book and make, does that evil laugh like, ha, 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 I have four kids failing. I, I am a success. I'm ruining lives. I'm not like that. Um, points mean nothing to me. I'm, I have a whole uh, file cabinet full of them. I can throw them at you at any time. You just got to earn them, right? So my goal is understanding. My goal is not punishment or you know, being stingy and um, making kid, you know, uh, kids have high anxiety and suffer and, and all that. Um, and I want to give them an, an incentive to do well and especially to learn from their mistakes. So my test correction idea is kind of like an athlete watching game film, right? What did you do wrong? How can we make it better? Okay, so here's the deal. Um, for any quiz or test where the student scores below 80%, not 80 points, 80%, uh, they can do test corrections, and here's the process. You write out the full question of the answer, uh, of the question you answered incorrectly. State your original choice and the correct choice, making it clear which is which. And most importantly, and this is the part that a lot of times kids don't do for whatever reason, it's the most important part, and I'm not going to give you as much credit if you don't do it. Explain the reasoning or the logic um, behind your original choice. What were you thinking at the time? Don't explain the reason the correct answer is correct. I know why it's correct. I wrote the test. Um, don't simply say I guess. If you did just guess, I really hope you didn't just close your eyes and put your finger down, but there's some reason why you guessed B and not C or D or A. Right? Um, I want you to think about that. And are you uh, making similar mistakes all the time? Is it a vocabulary thing where you really got to study your vocabulary more? Um, are you always missing those questions that say all of the following except? Are you always messing up when the answer is both A and D are correct, but you're only picking A and not reading the rest? Again, it's all about learning from your mistakes. So you do that um, well, and I give you half credit back for each uh, question you correct. So it was a four-point question, you get two back. Um, it was a six-point question, you get three back, whatever. Um, if it's not done well, like you're not really giving me good explanations, and every explanation is I guess, I guess, I guess, you won't get as much. I'll give you something, but you're not going to get as much because I want to see that you're you're really thinking about what's what's taking place and what you're uh, what you need to work on. Okay, um, so that's test corrections. Um, you have to be below 80. If you're above 80 and not happy, just work harder. Um, over the years, I've realized it's not fair, and and the kids we're being penalized for doing better uh, and not being able to um, improve their scores as much as some of the kids who did worse. So if you're above 80% and you're unhappy, try harder next time. Um, if you're below 80%, do some corrections. You can only correct it up to an 80%. Okay? Now, a couple quick things with this. Um, one, you might only need to, to do two corrections um, on a particular quiz or test to get yourself to 80. I would do it anyway. Two, two points is, is two points. Or two questions is two questions. The other thing is sometimes you see kids get discouraged because they did so poorly and they realize even if I correct every single question I got wrong, I can only get my score up to like a, a 58% and that's not even passing. So why should I bother doing it? Do it anyway. Because at the end of the marking period, that 32% that you originally got is going to hurt you a lot more than a 58. As bad as a 58 sounds, it's better than a 32. So Makes sense to do it, right? Um, they, they always have that option. Okay, so that's test corrections. Uh, extra help. Extra help is really easy. Don't have to talk about that much because my extra help, as we go to the... Okay, um, I'm very flexible with that. Before school, after school, uh, I told the students my off periods, 
Uh, I don't know if they remember them, but I can always do it on off period. I have cafeteria duty. They can come talk to me then. Whatever works for them, they just got to be proactive. Um, usually I can tell if a kid looks confused or is struggling. It's a lot harder when everybody's wearing a mask and behind a shield uh, to, to read body language and facial cues and things like that. So anytime they reach out, we'll set something up. We'll make it work. They just, again, they, they got to be proactive with that. Um, okay, course overview. It's you know pretty straightforward. I feel like I've already been going a while here and I'm going to get nuts about it. Yeah, we're already at 15 minutes. Um, so it's microeconomics, right? It's uh, the study of individual choices, uh, individual firms, individual consumers. Okay? Um, real quick, I am not an um, economics major. Okay? I had to take a couple courses in college, obviously, but this is not like my thing. Um, I'm a big, you go where the coach tells you to play or you play where the coach tells you to play type guy. This is where I'm told and I'm just happy to have a spot. Um, so I always tell the kids, look, I am not the person you want to talk to about which insurance company to, um, to buy into. Uh, I'm not going to be able to help your parents refinance, refinance their mortgage. Um, you know, what bank is giving the best interest. That's, that's not really me. I always say I married an accountant for a reason. I have my wife to take care of all that stuff. Um, what I do know is this exam and the AP micro content. I've been doing it for like. I think eight or nine years now, um, basically I had to teach it to myself, but now I don't consider myself an expert in, in much, but I'm an expert in passing this test and getting fours and fives. I'm at the point now where I really know um, the type of questions they like to ask, what they're looking for as far as uh, the constructive response answers and um, the pitfalls that students usually fall into. So again, don't ask me to help uh, refinance your mortgage, but if your kids stick with me, and put in a decent effort, they're going to get fours and fives on this exam. The only problem is a lot of them end up seniors. They get accepted into whatever college they got accepted to and go to total shutdown mode. Um, and, and that's unfortunate because I think this is a class that uh, it's, it's a very doable AP exam. I think it's not that crazy difficult to, to score very well on. And over the years, I feel like our, our numbers could have been a lot better. But again, we get that, that senioritis and even AP scholars, um, unfortunately, can, can fall into that. Right. It happens. Um, and, and the course, or the, the exam description, you know, I'll, I'll talk more to your kids about that over the, um, the next couple months. It's 60 multiple choice. It's three short answers. It's. Again, it's something that's very, very doable if, if you put in the effort. You know, we'll do review sessions. Um, we'll take practice exams. Uh, I think everything should be pretty good. And I think that's about it. All right, so you, you heard about the daily routine and the grading system. It's total points. Extra help is any time. Test corrections is uh, something I hope nobody ever needs to take advantage of, but it's there uh, anytime you need it. And you heard about the course uh, and the exam itself. So that's all I got for you. Um, if you endured the whole 18 minutes, good for you. Um, and if that wasn't enough for you, like I said, uh, hit me up at any time with the, um, with an email, uh, on your students class overview. There's also the codes for both remind and, um, and classroom. If you'd like to jump on there as a parent or with the remind, just to uh, be keeping up with what's going on. And that's it. Like I said, if there's anything that, that comes up that you need help with or clarification on, pscanlinislandtrees.org or .net, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. All right. Thanks, guys. Stay safe. Stay healthy. Hopefully see you soon.